Welcome to the Right Approach, sponsored by Michelob Ultra. I'm out here at Cascades Golf Course with the 2023 Jackson City Champion, Brian Kuhn, and his caddy for the week, Mike Kolka. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So, first of all, congratulations on the win, Brian. Thank you. Um, it was probably the best week of golf I've ever seen. Um, you had some absolutely epic matches. And let's start off with your quarterfinal match against um, the defending champion, Zach Dufresne. Um, I watched uh, most of that match, mm -hmm. and you found yourself five down through eight holes. And so what was kind of your mindset being, being down so much so early? Well, I gave him three holes with three putts. So in my mind, I was like, okay, I've, he's only won two. So I was walking to 9T, and the other thing in my mind was I've never been five down in a match ever. <laughs> and I was just kind of like grinding myself, like, okay, we're gonna grind this out one all the time, see what can happen. And then in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, we can just make this respectable, you know, and not get slaughtered. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, I'll feel better about the whole thing. And then I just, just kind of like something clicked on the back nine. I started making some putts and came down to the end and he um, evened it up. I evened it up on 15, 15 with yeah, a birdie. Was, yep. yep, and then we it, halved. 16 and then 17 came up and it was dead into the wind and I questioned driver and I looked over actually Mike Bolt was caddying that day and I looked over at him and he was kind of like not oh he's looking at his phone so I wouldn't say anything to him and I just decided driver is the way to go it's my best club in my bag so yeah yeah and you say you won 17 with a par 17 with a par yep, yep 17 with a par and, and close it out one up and so you were five down and it's not like Zach, you know, gave you any holes. I mean, Zach is a very consistent, steady player. You knew he wasn't gonna make many mistakes. So you went from five down and made five birdies, starting on nine, and then into the back nine, you know, to e e even up that match. Um, so, I mean, it, it was an awfully impressive comeback, you know, to go through and make, you know, make five birdies on the last 10 holes, you know, to go ahead and win that match. And as good as that match was, the one the next day in the semifinals was even better. Uh, you and Brett Velkacek um, played um, played just a fantastic match. You shot a bogey-free 65. He shot a bogey-free 66. You know when you won one up with a birdie on 18. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that match? It was just a, I mean, heavyweight battle really, just back and forth. Just he wasn't giving up. I was just trying to play steady, and I just kind of lost track of where everybody was. I knew where the match was, but I didn't know where we were as far as score goes. It was just trying to stay steady all day, really. Yeah. And, and what was crazy about that match, you know, we said bogey free, neither one of you made a bogey. And, you know, I, I think the longest par putt that was even conceded was you had like a four footer on 10 that was conceded. You know, because Brett hit it on in two yeah. and, and two putted for birdie. So neither one of you really even came close to making a bogey that day. Um, and Mike Kalka was on the bag for that yeah. match. And yeah. can you talk a little bit about, you know, the, the help that Mike gave you uh, th this, this past week? Well, I've played a lot of rounds at this golf course and a lot of tournaments at this golf course. And the thing that held me back was the way I read these greens and the way I putt mm -hmm. these greens. And Mike changed that this week. Like... He read every putt, and he was in on every putt, and his reads, I just went with them because I know that my reads are always a little off out here. Yeah. So I was just going with his read, and we would talk about it, and we would just commit to it, and I made tons of putts this week, tons of putts. Yes, you did, and I think that match against Brett, you obviously made like a six-footer for birdie on 18 to win the match, but you, you were down one heading into 16. You made about a 25-footer for birdie yeah. to tie the match on 16. Yep, that one just trickled in like the right center, and we had, we, we had a line, we had a spot, and I rolled it right over the spot, and I was just wasn't sure if it was going to get there, and it just trickled in that right center. Sure. Sure. And now I know that playing in tournaments out at Cascades in these past years, you always tell me, you come to me afterwards and say, <laughs> I can't read these greens. I can't read these greens. You know, and you haven't won a tournament yeah. out here before. Um, so, Mike, I, I know it was a great story, you know, that, that last birdie putt on 18 against Brett. You know, it was only about a six-footer, but, um, you know, your, your caddy skills really came into play there. You know, how, 
you guys did not read the putt the same way. So, Mike, how did you read that putt, and how did you convince Brian to, you know, to commit to the correct read there? Sure. Yeah. So, it was fun, you know, just to have the opportunity to be there, to be part of it. And uh, earlier in the round on 12, Brian had a really good look, and uh, it was just a little right to lefter, and uh, he kind of pulled it a hair. And he says when he gets off the green, you know, I just struggle with those getting those online, getting it where it needs to be and so you know I thought about that and lo and behold we get to 18 <laughs> and what do we have a right left right to lefter you know it's um it's out of the hole and uh, I asked Brian you know what you know what do you what do you think here and he's like yeah, I think it's right on the edge and I knew it wasn't I knew it was outside of the hole but I also knew in a spot like that you got to believe you got to believe in your stroke you got to believe in um your read everything everything has to be going there and uh so I, I said, you know, I think it's about a cup outside. And Brian looks at me, he says, there's no chance I'm giving you a cup here. I said, fair enough. I said, how about let's just split the difference? And uh, um, knowing full well that that was really what I wanted was about a half a cup on that. And uh, the, the goal there was to get Brian to believe in the putt. And uh, I knew it was a hard match and one that was back and forth and uh, just needed one more good stroke out of him. And uh, we got the right read and you made it and on to the finals. And that's really good caddying right there to know that you know Brian's probably not going to believe that it's going to break as much as you say so so to tell him it's a full cup when you only want him to go a half a cup that's you right. know to get him to kind of meet you in the middle there yep. I mean that's good caddying yeah. right there yeah well uh, we made a good team and uh, you know I I, um, I caddy for my daughter a lot and so I've uh, I've always liked caddying and, and I knew you know when he said that those right to lefters were a challenge. Uh, golfers, they struggle with certain shots and I knew that we had to just get the right line and you were putting so well the, the whole tournament, it was just uh, get in the right spot yeah. and knock it in. So. Hey, so you get past Brett with a bogey free 65 and then we go to the finals on Saturday morning, which is the 36 hole final. And you go up against Rob Longbreak and probably have the round of your life out here at Cascades. Yeah. Another one where I really didn't know where I was at, and I don't know how many times I asked Mike like where the match was because I didn't know where the match. I was just like, how do they say you're in the zone? But I was just dialed in with Mike, and we were just going shot to shot and hole to hole, and yeah, like got to the back nine of the first 18, and I think I asked him at one point, I'm like, where are we at? And he's like, I think you're six or seven or seven. I think he said seven, and I'm like, under or up? Like I said, you know, you're seven up in the match, and you're seven under for the day. like, oh. You know, and then kind of like, okay, we can just keep this rolling. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, you and Rob both birdie number one, and then you hold out for eagle from about 40 <laughs> yards right. or so on two. Yeah. You know, got three under through two holes. You know, and and you got to give Rob a, a, a lot of credit because, you know, he shot a one under par 71 in the morning round, and he found himself eight down through 18 holes which it just goes to show, you know, how hot you were. It was just seemed like birdie after birdie after birdie. And, and Rob, you know, hung in there, but it's gotta be demoralizing to shoot one under par and be eight down after 18 holes. Um, you know, but so on number nine, Rob hit it to about a foot. So we had a tap in birdie that you conceded. That was kind of really your only miss that round was, you know, you kind of blocked a tee shot behind yep. a tee, well, behind a tree on nine. So you, had, you knew Rob was in for birdies, so you had to try and hit a miraculous flop shot over the tree, you know, to, to make it, um, to have the hole. So you probably would have made a bogey there. Yep. You know, it, your par was conceded. But other than that, you went another 18 holes without a bogey. And so, you know, if you make par, you shoot 63. You know, if you would have made a bogey, 64. So I didn't think it could get any better on Friday. And then you <laughs> turn around on Saturday and, right. and it was even better. Yeah, that's right. And then, you know, the afternoon, again, I give Rob a ton of credit. He really fought hard in that afternoon round, tried to make it as close as possible. I think you got as much as nine up. But Rob won four holes in a row. Yeah. Um, and so got it down to five. And so it kind of got a little, little interesting there. You know, but then you won the ninth hole, and then you hit it to about two feet on 10 to make eagle on 10, and that really kind of. Yeah, that was another caddy call there. I wanted five. And he wanted me to just hold off of, you know, because you had to move it where the ball was. I had to move it right a little bit. And I had to move right to get to the flag. And we earlier in the morning, we were similar spot and I hit five and I was short. 
Uh, but I wanted five again. I was, you know, it was later in the day or whatever, and he was like, I think, I think it's the hold off four. I was like, all right, we'll go with the hold off four, and lo and behold, he was right again. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as it came off, it never left. No, it was, yeah, no, as soon as I hit, it was, yeah. <laughs> So, Mike, what do you, you know, when you have a player playing as well as he was, you know, that morning round, you know, he goes out and shoots nine under, kind of what's your mindset? How do you try to keep him, keep him in the moment and kind of keep him focused? Sure, sure. Well, you know, for Brian, it's always about trying to hit the ball hard. You yeah. know, he, uh, if we're in between clubs, let's, uh, let's hit the, the lesser of the two. Certainly off the, the tee, you know, I'm always telling him, hit it hard, pick your lines, um, and just kind of stay in the moment. You know, it's uh, it's fun. You know, talk about life and just joke, and we've had fun the last few years, kind of rekindling our friendship from college and, and high school. And so, uh, you know, just try to be friends. And you know, when get up close, you know, if I see things here or there struggling with chip shots a little bit, I said, you know, I'm like, hey, have you thought about maybe just moving it a touch forward? And you know, so. You know, it's hard to give a guy like Brian suggestions on uh, <laughs> sure. golf shots, you know, but, uh, um, you know, and he could have easily told me, like, no, I don't want to do that. But, you know, it's it's back and forth. And, uh, yeah, just kind of having fun, knowing full well. I'm texting all our friends, you know, like Brian's <laughs> five under through six, and <laughs> um, which is, and it's fun to watch, you know. Yeah, so I'm just happy that uh, uh, it worked out for us to uh, be together and that, that Brian won. So it was great. Now, when Brian, when Brian was up um, by nine, and then Rob wins four holes in a row to cut it back to, you know, five with 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 ten holes to play, did either one of you get a little nervous at all, or start to think like, oh no, like things are trending in the wrong direction here? I didn't. I knew that, other than seven, where I made a mental mental error on my second shot, I made my first bogey, and I don't know what it was, f- it almost forty work. holes. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Like. Rob was just playing good. Like he was when he, he didn't. He that's the only holy one with the par. He you know, he, yep, I he lost six picks. with a birdie. Yeah. Like yep. I was like, still playing good. It's he just got hot. I mean, I got hot. He's you know he wasn't going anywhere. No, no, he I wasn't. Mean, I think he was four under on that. Yeah, he was four, four under holes. those four holes. Yeah. And yeah. what are you gonna do with that? Like exactly. Just keep. So yeah. I was just like, we're just gonna keep grinding. Same thing against Zach, like against Zach. Like we're just gonna hole by hole, and you know he's gonna run out of holes eventually. We'll have to get uh, Gary Callahard digging to the record books because, you know, Rob was, through 31 holes, he was five under par, you know, and, and lost by six. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if that's the lowest someone has been in a city final being on the losing end of things. Um, and, and again, so under 31 holes, you were 11 under par, you know. I don't know. I got to think that's <laughs> probably <to> <laughs> the lowest anyone's ever been in a city championship final. Um, now, Brian, this was your second city championship win, yeah. the first one coming way back in 2000, and your first win here in Jackson since 2014, so it had been nine years. What, what did this win mean, mean to you? It meant a lot. Like, after the county, when I lost in the playoff to Trevor, I was walking in, and it was just emotional. Like, I didn't realize it was going to be like that. Like, I knew I wanted to win, but I, knew I, wanted, I, didn't, I, knew I didn't know I wanted to win that bad. Yeah. And I told my wife, I said, I gotta win. Like, and I had texted some friends, and they had told me, "Keep your head up. You're still one of the best players, or the best player in town." I was like, "Dude, I won in nine years. You can't say I'm the best around town because people are still winning, and I'm not winning." So, <laughs> you know, that was I had some motivation coming into the week to like try and make a point of how good I am. Then I, I mean, I always think I'm good, but the scores don't always show it. And I was motivated, and it turned out in my favor this week. I played very, very well and made a lot of putts and it just, I was just motivated to show people that I can still play this game. Well, I think you did that and then some, so. <laughs> That's right. Now, going back to the County Open, so people that don't know, just last month, you lost to Trevor Raymond in a playoff and you missed about a three foot putt on the second playoff hole, you know, that would would have kept the playoff mm-hmm. going. Maybe you should have had Mike on the bag. bag uh, definitely. <laughs> Definitely should have had someone on the bag. That's a tricky putt. The yeah, it was the, the that's the putt that lost it. But the thing that lost it was number five that week. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that you, day. again, you played almost flawless golf that whole weekend. Yeah, we made and one beside, bogey. You know, you made a triple bogey on five in yeah. the final round, and that that pretty much did it did it for you. So. Yeah. Well, it was fantastic golf this past week. Probably the best golf I've seen here locally in a tournament. So again, congratulations. Thank you very Brian, much. Great job, Mike. 
Now your your strongest weapon in your bag is your driver. You yeah. bomb the driver and not only you hit it long, but you hit it straight. So we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we're gonna get some driving tips from Brian and hopefully see him hit some bombs. Sounds good. All right. Welcome back to The Right Approach, sponsored by Michelob Ultra. All right, I'm out here on the third tee with the city champion, Brian Kuhn. Now, Brian, as we said earlier, your greatest weapon is your driver. You hit it long and straight. Um, you've always hit it long, you know, but you said that a couple weeks ago, you kind of found something um, that's kind of helped take your driver to the, to the next level. Um, do you mind sharing what that was? Yeah, yeah, I've been um, working on it for the better part of, I don't know, two decades almost. Because <laughs> before I, I had a lot of hang back in my driver. I always hit it hard, but the hang back would be the inconsistency. I mean, you, know, you flare it, you flip it. But if, you know, gosh, when was the Masters? A month or so? Yeah, two months ago. Two months, and two months ago, I was on the range at the club and just found the slot, like sitting balls on the range and started hitting them. They started going different and Bentley was caddying for me. He's like, dad, that sounded different. That was flying different. I'm like, I think I found the slot there and that and just got to trust it. And I said, that's going to be our saying for the day is just find the slot and trust it. And since then, just been trying to do it and it's starting to pay off. Yeah, so did you got a tip from, was it Gary Robinson or his son Brian? Brian is the one that's been trying, he rides me all the time about, you got to get off your right side, you got to get off your right side. Gary's the one that started with me when I was young, said you, you can't hang back like that, you're going to have to get to your left side, and Brian, he's just a spaz, and he's always like, if you just get off that left side and be athletic, you, you know, you're going to, you're going to bomb it, and that's just what I've found, finally, 20 years later. Yeah. So he, he, he you mentioned that he kind of gave you a tip to kind of drop your hands down, yep. you know, towards your knee. Can you kind of explain that a little bit about Yeah, it's, uh, you just, you know, you just get to the top. It's better to spin, probably better yeah. to spin this yeah. way, you know, to the top and then like exaggerate it like this, the bottom of this club is just going to go to my knee. Like you're never going to get there ever, but that's what this, this is the, like the slot. You look at any big, you know, any guy on tour, the first move when they get to the top is a vertical is down down yep down whether it's this far this far this far, like just down you won't even notice it but that's there now you're in the slot and then you just got to trust it down that line to the left side and my biggest fear has always been when i do that it feels like it's going to be a snap hook mm -hmm. but it just doesn't if you clear everything to that left side you're just out there okay. and it's not going to go left and that's what i've tried to took me 20 years to figure out it's not going to go left it's just going to well, go out there and fall out. Hey, I was going to say, out of the five rounds of golf I watched you play last week, I didn't see many, if if not any, misses to the left. You know, yeah. if you missed it all, it was just a little bit of a flare out to the right, but you took the left side completely out yeah, of the Yeah, and, and that's another part is figuring out the aiming now. I keep, it feels like it's going to draw, but it just doesn't. So lining up in that left center and just hitting trusting it down that line it. and trusting yeah. it is that's the next step is just trusting the left center of the fairway yeah. taking the left side out and then go to town yeah because you know most long players here in town they're long but when they miss they have big misses um but that's what i was so impressed with you last week was you hardly ever missed and when you did like you said it was a little right but you never hit it out of play you know you never had those big misses and so to combine that accuracy with your power you know that is that's a secret weapon you know that you know it's, it's just you know you can get it every par five and two you know a lot of these par fours you just have flip wedges in and you never hit the big miss yeah it was yeah just the confidence to have to step up on a tee and a driver on every hole out here that whether you need driver or not yeah. i can fit the driver in and and so even holes 15 and 17 out here where the long drivers can carry it over the creek you know like it, your match against brett Belkacek. You're, you're tied up on 17, the wind was dead into your face, probably a 20 mile an hour wind. And so I'm going, God, is he gonna hit driver or not? But sure enough, you, you came up, you hit driver, you have that confidence that you really don't ever second guess it. Yeah, well that came from the previous match against Zach when it was even, and it was the same wind, same like, but it's even, same match, even. And I actually contemplated it, like, am I going to hit driver? And I was like, you know what, it's the best club you got. And I hit the ball probably harder than I've hit it in 10 years, right 
the middle of the fairway. And yeah. it's like the next day, I didn't even question it. So it's the, just the confidence to step up there, pick your line, and swing through it. Yeah. Do you have any any um, special swing thoughts when you are under pressure? Or if that, that match is tied, I know I have to hit a good drive because if I miss it, you know I could lose the match right here. Are there any any swing thoughts there? Well, or? I just try to pick a spot like six or eight feet in front of the ball, and that's the line. So now you got your line, and then it's just staying in it. Yeah. If I just stay in it through the ball, I mean the contact's usually pretty good. All right. Well, let's see you mass a few drivers out here. Sounds good. Now again, we are into the wind today, so yep. um, might not hit them as quite as far as I saw a couple of your drives on this hole <laughs> last week. But we'll see yeah, what you can do. It's uh, it's all right. We'll just aim at that guy in the middle of the fairway there. Yeah, the guy with the camera. <laughs> And you might hit them. That is right down the middle of the fairway. You actually had a little bit of draw on that. Yeah, one. that was a little bit off the toe. Okay. A little draw, but it's still in the fairway. Oh yeah, still in the fairway. A little more of a draw. Yeah. Oh, that one's pretty colored. And another perfect drive right down the right edge of the fairway there. Nice and high and straight. Two perfect drives. Let's go see where they end up. All right. Sounds good. All right, Brian, your first drive was a little off the toe, so it was yep. back about 15 yards, but the second one you really hammered. I'm guessing it was probably just over 300 yards, maybe 305, 310. Got 73 yards into the pin, and pretty Perfect. typical of what you did all week last week. Yeah, hit her good. Yeah, hit well, her in the fairway and leave yourself a wedge. That's right. Well, it was very impressive, and um, last week, phenomenal golf. It was really fun to watch. I really enjoyed it and congratulations again. Thank you very much. Thanks for being on the show, Brian. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And thanks for watching The Right Approach, sponsored by Michelob Ultra.